Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel and thanks for tuning in to another episode of our Mercedes Sprinter camper conversion. Today we're going to be giving you a rundown on how we're going to be connecting our solar panels into our leisure batteries and also how we're going to be running our 12 and 240 volt appliances within the van. Been away this week so I haven't been really out on the van that much, we've been up in London for Charlotte's birthday so we're just going to give you a quick rundown here with the products that we've had delivered in the post and then we'll be doing a full installation video once we get them installed in the van. So the first thing we'll be looking at is over on my left which is our solar panels. As we mentioned before we've got two of these that we're going to be installing on the top of the van. They're 200 watt solar panels so we've got 400 watts of solar in total. We're going to be mounting these to the top of the van making some custom brackets just so that we can have them tilted as well. Tilting the solar panels towards the sun just gives you that little bit more power draw from the sun rather than having them flat so it doesn't cast any shadows. We'll be showing you how we install those once we've got them all set up on the top of the van. Once the solar panels are connected on the top of the van we'll be running them in series. So this is connecting the solar panels together and then bringing two wires down inside the van and connecting them into our solar charge controller. This is our solar charge controller that we've bought. We've gone for the Smart Solar MPPT1 over 50. Two different types of solar controller. There is the PVM and MPPT solar controllers. The MPPT solar controllers give slightly better conversion from the solar into the leisure batteries and also regulate that power a little bit better going into the batteries. So if your budget allows, definitely recommend you go for MPPT. We've got PVM in the transporter, works perfectly fine, but you just get that a little bit more efficiency out of the panels and obviously if you've got some quite expensive panels up on the roof, you want to be getting the best out of them. So this is a smart solar charge controller from Victron. It has Bluetooth built in, which allows us to monitor the power draw both from the panel and also what our batteries are handling and what they're taking out. So we'll be able to run all that from the Bluetooth from our phones. Once we've got it all set up, we'll be running you through how you can look at all the different uh, options within the app. Watched many reviews on this online. Uh, seems to be the controller that everyone goes for. So yeah, opening up the box, quite a big unit that connects into here. So very simply have two lots of wires that come into the front. So let's just open it up and I'll show you. So as you can see, it's quite a thick unit, quite a neat little package though. We'll be connecting this up underneath our bed onto the backboard. Once we've got all the wiring set up, we'll be running you through how we're going to connect all this up. But basically we have two wires that go into the bottom of here. We have two wires, the negative and the positive from the solar panel, which go into your PV section just here, and then your output to your battery. What the solar controller does is it takes the power that the solar panels produce, converts it into a power that can charge the batteries and then regulates the charge into the batteries so you don't get any overcharging and also you don't get any back draw from the batteries going back up to the solar panel. You need one of these, you can't just connect your solar panel straight into your batteries, it just won't work um, and it will end up damaging your batteries. So you'll need to have some sort of solar controller, whether it's this particular one or whether it's a different brand. Uh, there's many different brands out online, but we'll put a link into the description of where we bought this from. Bought this from eBay, so we'll put a link down in the description from that down there. Different lights on the front just tells you the different modes that the solar controller is in. Absorption mode just means that your battery is charging. Float means that it's just holding its charge and that the solar controller is just putting enough charge in just to replace what's going out of the battery. So, solar controller. Pretty pleased with that, looking forward to getting it all connected. Get an instruction manual just here with it, but everything that you need to know is online as well, so you can just go online and have a look, but that's that. This particular one comes with a five year warranty. One of the reasons why we went for it uh, just allows us, gives that a little bit of extra peace of mind. If anything does go wrong with it, we can just get in contact with Victron uh, and they will send us a replacement or send us, get it repaired. Next unit we're gonna be moving on to, we wanna be running 240 volt appliances within our van. Obviously straight off the ledger batteries we'll be connecting in a uh, distribution bank for our 12 volt appliances running both USB and also the cigarette lighter type adapter plugs but we also we want to be, be able to run 240 volt appliances so we went ahead and bought a Sterling Power Products uh, power inverter. 
Again, there's two different types of inverter. There's a pure sine inverter and there's a quasi sine inverter. The difference between the two is just the type of power that it outputs. Some products, 240 volt, are quite sensitive to the type of power that they get and need to be very clean. So we've gone for the pure sine wave inverter. A little bit more expensive, but definitely recommend if you can going for a pure sine wave inverter. This is a 1600 watt model, quite a, quite a powerful model, but we want to be running things like uh, blenders, charging batteries and having multiple products running at the same time. So went for quite a powerful model. I think they do a 2000 watt version, a little bit overkill for what we needed. So we just went for the 1600 watt. So let's open up the box and take a look. So here we have the power product, Sterling Power Products Inverter. Again, we'll be mounting this underneath the bed uh, along with the solar charge controller, the leisure batteries and all of our other electrical components. We'll be doing a full video on that when we do come to that install, so look out for that. So connections here, we have on the back, we have a positive and a negative. So these will be coming out of the battery, obviously through some fuses, some quite big, powerful fuses. We'll probably be putting a 160 or 200 amp fuse going into the back of here, but we'll spec those up and we'll tell you exactly what we've done when we install those. Um, and we've also got an earth on here as well, which is earthing the, the product itself. So straight off the battery into here, and over on this side, there's two different models of this. Uh, in inverter. There's one that has the RCD uh, breaker on here and there's also, I don't know whether you can see that on the box just here, but there is also another model that has the 230, uh, 240 volt output straight on the front which you can just plug straight, things straight into. Because we want to be running multiple uh, accessories off here, we went for the RCD version which allows us to connect into a fuse box and then distribute out from there using other RCDs uh, running around the van. We'll be having multiple outputs for our 230 volt appliances around the van so it just gives us that little bit of extra flexibility. There is also a remote out port here. Uh, we haven't bought the remote yet but we probably will do. just means that from inside the van we can turn the inverter completely off without having to go around into the boot to switch it off. Obviously if there's no power going out of it it's not going to be using a lot of power but we have seen uh, reviews where people say that you get ghost draw from these. Obviously you don't want to be just drawing down your battery when you're not using it. So being able to switch it off completely. You can just come around and flick the little switch just here, turn it on or off. But obviously it means for us that we'd have to be calling into the garage of the van. So we don't want to be doing that, so we'll probably be picking up the remote as well. Again, once we come to install this, we'll, we'll give you a full video. Again, we'll put a link to the description in the description below where we bought this from. Again, bought it from eBay, bought it from the same seller. We'll put a link in the description below. So when choosing the size of the solar controller, again, the solar controllers come in different sizes. We've gone for the 100 over 50. It means we can have 100 volts coming in from our solar array and also 50 amps coming in from the solar array, array as well. It's a little bit over spec for what we've got, but it does mean that we can add extra panels uh, on the roof at some point if we needed to, or add a third panel that we can just put on the floor and connect into the solar controller. Recommend that you do go a little bit above what you need, just in case you do get a little extra spike from your panels. You don't want it blowing up your solar controller because they are quite expensive. Obviously, go away and do your research on these different products. There are lots of different products out on the market. We're not getting paid by any of these companies to promote any of these. But just, these are the ones that we've just seen other van converters using uh, and have read plenty of reviews online. But again, go away and do your own research. Sizing up what you need in terms of solar and also your leisure batteries. As I mentioned before, we've got 400 watts of solar on going on the roof and we have two 220 amp hour AGM leisure batteries that will be going in the boot with all of these products. Quite large batteries, quite heavy, but for the power draw that we're going to be needing within the van, we want to be trying, trying to be off grid as much as possible. We worked out that the solar and the leisure batteries Probably a little bit under for what we would ideally want, but going any larger would mean a third battery, which would be adding quite a considerable amount of weight. Plenty of videos online or on YouTube of how to calculate 
the power draw that you need. We'll put a link to Greg. We used his video online, found it very useful on how to size this up. We'll put a link to his video in the description below. Thank you very much for helping us out with that, Greg. It was a great video. We've also had delivered our 12 and 240 volt cable that we're going to be putting throughout the van. We went for quite thick cable. A lot of people that we've seen online use relatively thin cable for running around their van. But just for the um, added security and safety that these extra thick cables give you just in different temperatures, we wanted to go a little bit thicker than we would do normally. So we've gone for two and a half mil for our 240, the Arctic Blue cable here. Uh, this is 25 meters. I think this will do what we need to do for putting our 240 volt appliances around the van. Like I said, this will be connected into a distribution block with RCDs uh, that will be coming out of the inverter. We'll be running this around in the ducting in the van. And then for the 12 volt appliances, we've gone for one and a half mil black cable here, which will be running out to all of the 12 volt uh, sockets we put around the van. So all of our USB sockets, all of our cigarette lighter adapters, and also then connecting up things like water pumps and anything else that takes a 12 volt supply within the van will be using this. Be coming straight off the battery from a 12 volt distribution block using mini fuses for each of our appliances. Be writing, rating the fuses accordingly with the, the appliances we'll be using. But as I said, we'll be putting a full video up online when we come to connect everything up. So keep an eye out for that. So that's everything we've had delivered this week. As I mentioned, quite a short video this week. We just thought we'd give you an update on everything we've got, we've had delivered in. Thank you very much for checking back in with us. Remember, if you're liking these videos, to hit that thumbs up. Also, we just like to say a big thank you for everyone that has subscribed to our channel. If you haven't already done so, just hit that subscribe. We also love to hear your comments and what you're doing with your own vans or just some ideas, giving us some tips and tricks and things that we can do. Remember we put up a video every Sunday, whether that's an update video on what we've been buying or whether it's bits and pieces that we've been doing on the van during the week. So remember to check back in every Sunday. Also, if you want to be notified of when we put up new videos, remember to hit that little notification bell and you'll get a notification of when we put up a new video. But thank you again for tuning in and we'll look forward to speaking to you next week. Bye.